Uh, if you would, if you turn to Matthew chapter 5, we're going to read the first 16 verses to you this evening. And when I get through, even though it's not around the text verse, I am going to come back to the first couple of verses before we get into the text verse and the verses surround, or just previous to it. But Matthew chapter 5. This, like I said, I was excited about this, and uh, may we heed. For those who can and will, let us stand for the reading of God's Word. If you found your place, say Amen. amen. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. And here we're going to get into the, the verses for, tonight's, er, for tonight. Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost his savor, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing, but to be cast out, and to be trodden under foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on an hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle, and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. You may be seated. Let's look at the first two verses. Now most of us has heard Dean talk about the three W's. When you're reading or studying the Word of God, this will help you in understanding what you're reading. One is, who's doing the talking? Two is, the second W is, what's being said? And the third W is, who's it being said to? Well, who's doing the talking here? Jesus is doing the talking. Well, who's He talking to? And in verse 1, we're going to see two groups mentioned. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Jesus was not speaking to the multitudes. He didn't open his mouth till his disciples came unto him. His disciples, now the multitude was there and they, the ones that was there, got to hear the message but it wasn't for them. It was for His disciples. And that's what I want to talk to you about or what we're going to talk to you about tonight is His disciples. Disciples. And I, I've wrote, written down a simple definition out of another Bible. Disciple. A learner, a follower of Jesus Christ. 
So that's what we're going to look at tonight is disciples. But we're going to look at it in a, in a context that really comes to us. The text verse tonight is verse 16, but we're going to look at verses 14 through 16. We're going to look a little bit in the book of John, but for the most part, here's where we're going to be. Here's where we're going to be. But it's about disciples. And I want to, I want to say this to you about disciples. Being saved does not make you a disciple. That's step one. Now you can't be a disciple without being saved. But just being saved does not make you a disciple. And so let's keep that in mind as we go forward tonight. And, and I want us to think about that. Because we've got a lot of, there are a lot of God's people, a lot of God's children. That, I mean, they've been washed in the blood. They're born again. They're truly saved. They're on their way to heaven. They're on their way to, they're on their way to be with God for all of eternity. But they just coast. They never put their nose to the grindstone. They just coast. They're, they're glad they've got the get out of hell card free. And that's all they're focused on. And let's never ever call any of those children of God disciples because they're not disciples. And I want us to look tonight, and John, and you don't have to turn there if you don't want to. I'm going to read a verse here in John chapter 8. A little later, I'm going to read a couple of verses in John chapter 15. But right now, in John chapter 8, and in verse 31. So in John chapter 8, verse 31, again, Jesus speaking. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him. He's talking to the saved. These are Jews that has accepted God's gift of salvation. These are saved Jews. These are the, this is our brothers and sisters in the Lord from around 2,000 years ago. But he doesn't say of them they're disciples. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And you've heard me say on a number of occasions that there are some awfully big little words in the word of God. For instance, a lot of time the little three-letter word, but. Huge word. The little two-letter word, if. Huge word. Jesus said, if ye continue in my word. He didn't say, and again, he's talking to the saved already. He didn't say, you're my disciples. He said, if you continue in my word, you are my disciples. And so that's what I want us to, I want us to focus on tonight, discipleship. But I want us to do it in a way, the title of the message is, Let Your Light So Shine. And so Jesus said, and I've got it written down in my notes here in John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am. He uses that name of God. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Jesus is the light of the world. But what does he tell us here in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, the first statement in that verse? Ye are the light of the world. And I want us to think about that, being the light of the world. This, this is work. This is works, and, and we're going to deal with that in a bit. But he goes on. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Let us not hide the light that's in us. There are so many people, and here, you know, you, you've heard Dean say this as well, and I'm going to say it this evening, you're going to accuse me of meddling. Well, I'm, I'm going to meddle. And, and by the way, if you don't know, that's part of a preacher's jobs to meddle, so I'm going to meddle this evening. I'm going to meddle. Let your light so shine. How does our light shine? For instance, you go home this evening, you turn on the television. 
What are you watching? Are you watching a show that's got ungodly sexual behavior with it? Are you watching a program that takes God's name in vain every other sentence? If you are, you're hiding your light under a bushel. And matter of fact, you're not even a disciple. Yeah, you're saved, but you're not a disciple. You've hidden your light. And that light's got to shine for you to be a disciple. It's got to shine for Michael to be a disciple. It's not just enough to be washed in Jesus' blood. That's step one. We've got to let Jesus shine in and through us. Which brings me to the next point. I don't have anything in me to give light. There's nothing. I was born with nothing to give light. I have nothing inside of me to give off light. And I thought about this. If you've ever been outside on a dark night, and we all have, we've looked up at the stars, we've looked up at the moon, and when you look up at the moon, what's the moon do? Does the moon give off its own light? The moon reflects the light from the sun, the S-U-N. Those of us that's been watched in Jesus' blood, we're to reflect the light of the S-O-N because that's where the light comes through, comes from, comes from Jesus Himself. Jesus is the source of our light. We should not be hiding our light under what we're watching on television. We shouldn't be hiding our light under what we're paying our money to go see movies and what they're about. How about music? What's your favorite kind of music? How many would raise their hand and say, oh, I listen to classic country? Have you ever listened to the words of classic country? Is it any less rock gut than most of the militant rap songs you'd hear today? Now, maybe, maybe the same vulgar words aren't used, but the same message is being promoted. The same, get out there and drink, get out there and have illicit sex, get out there and do what if, I guess to use close to a quote from great uncle Bob, if it feels good, do it. Ain't that the message? Ain't that the message of most of the music out there? Whether it's from the 50s or the 80s or today's music? Ain't that the message for most of our movies and TV programs? So yeah, I'm meddling. And uh, we've, and we've all got to watch, how many times have we heard Dean say this? What goes into a mind comes out into a life or comes out of a life. So you say, well, I spend time in the Word of God every day. Wonderful. We ought to. Every one of us ought to spend time in the Word of God every day. But if I'm spending time also watching sinful behavior on television, and I'm going Friday or Saturday and watching sinful behavior at the movie theaters, and I'm listening to sinful behavior on the radio or my CD player or what have you, that's going to come out too. That's going to tell on us. Be, Brother, Brother Jake knows this, one of Dad's favorite quotes. Be sure your sin will find you out. And uh, so we need to be careful that we're not hiding our light. This, ye are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. Why? Jesus is going to give us two reasons here in the next two verses. Continuing in verse 15, And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Who's in the house? Brothers and sisters. I need to see Brother, Brother Jake's light. I need to see Peggy's light. We all need to see one another's light because it's an encouragement. It's a strengthening. So our brothers and sisters in the Lord need to see our light. It's important that they get to see Jesus' light in and through us. It's important. Not long ago, I stood up here and I, the message was about the blind man that Jesus healed twice. And I, I brought up the point, 
Jesus is Almighty God. Why, why did He have to heal this man twice? The answer is He didn't have to. But Jesus painted us a picture of what salvation looks like when we sing Amazing Grace and we sing was blind, but now I see. But our vision's not perfect. We see through a glass darkly. We see through a glass darkly. Our vision's not perfect. And so we need our brothers and sisters in the Lord's, or our brothers and sisters, light shining to help us see. God gives us His light directly and then indirectly through one another. And we need, we need that light. But then in verse 16, Jesus says, Let your light so shine before men. Before men. He didn't say before the saved. He's done dealt with them in the house. The house is the saved. Now he's talking about men. That's the lost and dying world out there, and they can't see a thing. They're blind. The only, the only thing they can see is when one of us is allowing Jesus to shine in and through us. We need to let our light so shine. I know I'm sounding like a broke record, and praise God for that. We need desperately. We're living in a world right now that is so dark and getting darker by the moment. And the only light that's in this world is from Jesus. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. And now if you would, if you would turn to John chapter 15 because I want to connect Matthew chapter 5 verse 16 and John chapter 15 and verses 7 through 8. Jesus is going to be speaking to us again about discipleship. Jesus says in John chapter 15 and verse 7 and 8, If ye abide in me and my words abide in you, Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified. Didn't we read about glorification of the Father there in Matthew chapter 5? Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. What's bearing much fruit? We read about that too in Matthew chapter 5 verse 16. It's your good works. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. So shall ye be my disciples. One of God's children that's not a disciple is not bearing any fruit. Not only is he or she not bearing much fruit, they're not bearing any fruit. We need to be bearing much fruit. The world needs us to bear much fruit. And most importantly, as Jesus said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Does it say and glorify yourself? Does it say glorify your church? Does God's word say to glorify family, friends, loved ones? Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. That's the reason this lost and dying world needs desperately to see God. For, for 33 plus years, the world got to see God in the flesh. For three years, as he walked, as he taught, as he preached, as he healed, they got to see God in the flesh. They got to see the light of the world. Well, Jesus went back to heaven. And he's left us here so that he can shine his light through to those, the brothers and sisters, those in the house, 
to be an encouragement to one another and for the lost and the dying because they need desperately. You know, my Uncle Bob, if God doesn't intervene, he's going home soon. He's ready. Brother Preacher Gene mentioned in prayer requests, lost, lots of lost. If I ask for, and I'm going to, how many of you have got lost loved ones? How many of you does God pretty regularly bring you in contact with lost strangers? All of us. We need, we need so much to stop. You know, and Brother Brother Jake done, as he always does, a wonderful job with the Sunday school lesson this past Sunday. And it is, you know, where he talked about, in my words, and you correct me if I'm wrong, about the boldness that we should have in praising God. And how much easier, even for the shy and the introverted among us, how much easier it is when we're inside these four walls because we know we're around like-minded, like-hearted people. But it's not, it ain't good enough for us to yell amen and praise God and praise the Lord and, and witness to one another inside these four walls. The world needs us out there doing that each and every day. Amen. We, they need it. And we've got what the world needs. Now, we can't save anybody. I mean, we've all heard Dean say that, and it's true. I can't save anybody. But I know who can, and I need to be telling people about the man who can, the God-man who can.